Welcome. Welcome to uh, Ballistics Home Armory. My call sign is Chef, and today I'm going to be talking about a uh, blaster that I acquired just recently. I actually made myself. Uh, the only thing about it was I had to get the hardware kit from Captain Slug, and and of course it came out to be my talent claw. Yes, my talent claw. Uh, my talent claw here when I actually built it from the files off the of Thingiverse and my first printed out the printed out at first I thought the version 4 was the uh, up, updated but actually it was wrong it was actually it was a longer prime and of course the piston part was going to be not catching so on the version 3 that Captain Slug had on his Thingiverse account page. Uh, I actually ended up 3D printing the piston piece. Uh, I didn't feel like printing out a, uh, a barrel shroud so I ended up printing out the uh, barrel shroud and just cutting it just a little bit. I also added in the uh, stock point. The stock point you can actually find in the uh, Thingiverse. It's actually it takes about like depending on your printer in your print settings. Mine took about two and a half days to print. Um, the hardware kit, it came with a K25 spring. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't having that performance that I wanted. Um, so I have actually a K31 spring. The K31 spring that I'm running is actually a lot, it's a lot easier to prime. And I still got pretty much of a decent uh, fire rate. And the good thing about it is that I can actually, I can actually spam. The other thing too I added on was the riser, Picatinny riser, uh, from Captain Slug himself. I actually printed it, and of course I'm running a uh, red and green dot. This is actually is a cheap one that I got off of Thingiverse, uh, not Thingiverse, but uh, Amla, excuse me. And this thing is about like 20 bucks. Next piece was added on was the su suppressor scar barrel. Uh, this one is actually the smaller version. It's the same version that you, you, you'll see for the caliber, um, but it's actually shrunk. Next thing, too, was this uh, angled foregrip. As you can tell, the angled foregrip has a little bit of a hook on the front, so it makes it a bit easier for you to put your finger, um, put your finger in to help prime it. Uh, another thing, too, I said to myself, if I'm going to get into the short dart, I might as well invest in some mags. So right now I'm running the red katana mags uh, that are from uh, Luke from Out of Darts and of course depending on what war I have darts that are in and these are actually the half link or basic cut down uh, waffle head darts the next ones I run to as well is actually the AF Pro darts uh, AF Pro darts I've noticed I get a little bit of a higher FPS with the waffle heads, I get a really low FPS. And the good thing about it is that hey, uh, FPS ranges, um, it goes from like with the waffle head darts, I get about like a 170 to 180. With the Adventure Force uh, AF Pro darts, I get about, if lucky, I get about like, and I just dented them. That did one of my store. Uh, okay. The good thing about it is that I can, with those AF Pro darts, I, I actually can actually get an FPS around like 220 to about, if lucky, uh, about 240. And that's only with a K31 spray. I know a lot of people say, oh, K31, you should put a Pro, K Pro, Pro K26. It's like, hey, this is my blaster, I can do whatever I want with it. <laughs> you know? Um, so pretty much everything. I also added the uh, the coupler piece, which is a metal piece. And the good thing about the metal piece is actually I can if I have end up doing a dry fire by act, by doing by a dry fire, it's not going to crack the uh, coupler piece because it has those uh, uh, aluminum uh, pieces there. The thing I like about it was that it was pretty simple to print this uh, coupler piece and then to slide in the, the two aluminum couplers. Those things I actually got from Captain Slug too when I ordered the, 
the hardware kit, and a couple other pieces as well. Another thing too that I liked about the, when I printed it out, I actually used only one spool of filament. I know a lot of people say, one spool, is that it? Yes, one spool. One spool of filament, and the one spool of filament that I used was a, a really big spool. They call it a Texas size filament. And that thing's actually from a company in Houston, Texas. And it's big, uh, the spool size is a three, uh, three kilo spool, ring in its, the kilo spool is about roughly about 7.7 .7 pounds. And on my uh, Lowe's Bottas 6 printer, it had no problems uh, printing and using that filament and printing it. it had no problems. Uh, one thing I liked about the filament was that it's being a big spool, I didn't have to worry about if I had enough filament to print something out. So that's a good thing. Uh, but I only used one color, and that was white. And they didn't have the other colors I wanted, so I said, I'll oh, screw it, so for white. So I actually ordered two spools, because I was going to be doing testing on one spool, and then the next spool I was going to do a full, full print. Well, so I printed everything out, and I was going to use my airbrush to paint it. But somebody told me, and someone actually gave me, a, uh, gave me an idea, so I went with it, and that person was actually Valor. He actually gave me a, um, a hint to use, basically gave me an idea to use uh, 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 the vinyl dye paint. So that's what I use. So I use vinyl dye paint for the rear, and whatever stuff that is tan I used was vinyl dye. And one thing I like about it is that ever since I did this one, it actually stands out pretty pretty nicely. From a distance, you can tell that it's it's a toy mostly, but I wanted to make sure that it actually pops out a little bit. The only issue that I was having too was the um, was my suppressor Scarborough. Uh, being a little bit smaller than the than the Caliburn version, I was like having issues a little bit, but I finally got it tweaked, and I'm, and I'm running uh, about like one eighth of a turn on mine. So nothing too. I don't know people kind of noticed too. I'm also running a. <laughs> front side off the Nexus Pro, I said to myself, well, I kind of wanted to, that's where I put my finger at when I hold it, you know, and everything. So I said, no, I just want to just put it there for, for my, for my thumb at. <laughs> the good thing about the blaster being 3D printed, if something breaks on it, I can actually print the, uh, 3D print the, uh, the part out. I don't have to have someone else or take it to a maker space and then wait and then whatever so um, I actually used this during a Nerf war uh, my Nerf war was uh, Hampton Roads Nerf it's in, based in uh, based in Virginia and this actually did pretty well I actually was able to uh, go up against a guy with a Lynx I was able to go up against a uh, person with an FDL a couple of modded blasters but the good thing about it was that in my group they call me the uh, they call me the sniper in the group, and that's like. But honestly, I love this blast. I love this, and now I don't know why a lot of people prefer it. And it does hit pretty decent. It does hit pretty hard. So you know, so so pretty much the blaster being as it is. I like it. You know, a lot of people will say that, oh, you should have had this, you should have had that. Well, print your own, do what you do, what you do whatever you want to do with it. This is mine. I prefer the way it is, and everything else. All right, folks. I was actually using wolf head darts, uh, and for my game. And of course, one thing about these darts, they have a little bit of a drag because the heads were a little bit wider, but. The good thing about it was that my numbers were pretty decent for the war. Uh, there was a couple outliers, but hey, it was actually good. You know, uh, some of the darts were actually pretty good. The F Pro darts were a lot better. I was actually getting a little bit of higher FPS, and the good thing about them that they they actually flew straight. They flew better out of the barrel of the Talonclaw that I had. So, and that's the good thing about it.